Uh, my name is uh, William Isla Sabeles. That's my stage name, but people call me Bill. No, um, I was okay. I mean, I was, I was a, a B student in most of my classes. I was never the best student in any class that I took uh, in high school, probably even college. Uh, so no, I, I didn't exhibit any mathematical talent uh, when I was in high school. I, I could do the I could do the mathematics work, but I didn't excel at it. I was a real disaster as an undergraduate student. Real disaster. So when I when I arrived, I took calculus, and I was an engineering student, and I dropped calculus my first semester. I just couldn't understand anything the professor was saying. And I took a college algebra and trig instead. And I earned a D. And then I earned another D in chemistry. So my first semester, I earned nine units of Ds. You know, I, I advise a lot of students. And students tell me, well, you know, how can I be a math major? I got a C in calculus. You know, I point out, compared to me, you look brilliant. So I was really a terrible student. And that, um, those Ds uh, caused me to make a decision which uh, had, a, had a great impact on my life. I thought I was gonna be a failure. So um, in my second semester, I took calculus. Why? You know, anybody who got a D in college algebra and trig is not ready for calculus. But I knew I was. Um, and I got a C in calculus. And, you know, and then I took the next calculus sequence, the next calculus course, and I got an A. And then the next semester, I took differential equations and something. And um, I decided I'm getting a PhD in math. I had not the vaguest idea what you did with the PhD in mathematics. So I study uh, number theory. And um, I've written papers in what is called elementary number theory. You know, these are problems that uh, anyone can understand, right? You can mention problems in, in, in elementary number theory that are, that are just so easy to comprehend. Like, um, well, what are prime numbers, right? Prime numbers are numbers that are only divisible by one and itself. And so, uh, you know, the list of prime numbers is two, three, five, siete, once, trece, 17, not, I mean, oh, wait, this goes on forever. There's infinitely many primes. So here's a very simple question. Are there infinitely many primes, P, so that P plus two is also a prime? That's called the twin prime conjecture. And nobody thought it was going to be resolved. Now, all of a sudden, mathematicians have made tremendous progress on this problem. And perhaps a solution is in sight. So these number theory problems require very little background to understand. Uh, but in attempts to solve them, people have developed whole areas of mathematics. And um, I was quite intrigued with these problems in in elementary number theory. So I wrote, I wrote papers in elementary number theory and I also wrote papers in more abstract areas of, of mathematics called algebraic number theory. I, I was really a disaster as an undergraduate student. And, um, you know, there were so few Chicanos uh, on campus even th then. And I, I was certainly the only math major that was a Chicano. And I found that I had to study much more than the other Chicano students. You know, the, many of them were education. A lot of them were in education. And they didn't study. They didn't have to study the way I did. And I found that I couldn't hang around with them because there were parties all the time, you know? And so I separated myself and went to a different part, to a different library altogether so that I could concentrate more. And I always regretted the fact that I had to give up a community in order to study what I wanted to study. 
And so uh, when uh, we founded SACNIS and we could come together as a community of scientists, uh, it, it really, it brings tears to my eyes. When I go to a SACNIS conference, that's Society for the Advancement of Chicanos and Native Americans in Science. And you see all of these Hispanics and Native Americans and every, everything, right? And oh, it's just so wonderful to see all of them being given this opportunity to study what they want in a community that they belong to. But unfortunately, those communities are really small at the local level. Uh, unfortunately, there are so many minority students, so many women that are the only ones in their uh, technical uh, courses. I was fortunate and unfortunate that um, I went to graduate school in the town where I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. All of my degrees are from the University of Arizona because nobody would accept me into graduate school. And I'm really a lucky person to have gotten in. So. Uh, I'm related to half of Tucson at the time. So every weekend there was a, a wedding or a baptism or a quinceanera and a funeral every other Thursday. I mean, the commitments that I had to the, to the family were enormous. And yet I think of myself as a tremendous success in graduate school. It was the most amazing time in my life. I never felt that I was going to fail. You know, I was stuck on my thesis problem for a while and I said to myself, you know, you're, you're a Chicano representing this community and uh, there's simply no room for failure. When I was a graduate student, my thesis advisor was Austrian and he suggested uh, an area of mathematics uh, called addition theorems in finite groups. And I read his book on it and I thought, man, you really work, you have to work so hard to get almost nothing in this area. And I told him, no, I'm not, I'm not working there. <laughs> so, uh, so I worked in algebraic number theory and I'm working along and uh, he said, you know, I think that you have to look at my thesis problem, my own thesis in order to solve this problem your problem. So I had to read his thesis in German. So I translated this German thesis, right? And, uh, and, and understood the results. It turned out he didn't finish his thesis problem. There was, there was one piece that he couldn't solve. And, um, uh, and I used a, a, a more modern method called piadic methods, and, which I learned by myself. And um, I used piadic methods to complete his thesis. And with that, I could complete my own thesis. That was, that was kind of cute. I was his last, almost last PhD student and I completed his thesis and mine in one swoop. That was kind of fun. So, you know, it's a cute story. I had wonderful relationships with faculty. Uh, and my thesis advisor was, you know, really a, a wonderful guy. Uh, let me tell you how wonderful this guy was. So when I was getting my PhD, right, I told you I'm going off to Sandia Laboratories. I'm, I'm going off into industry. But then industry calls me up and said, we have a hiring freeze, you can't come. And I said, well, when can I come? They said, I don't know. Next week, next year, we don't know. I said, well, what am I supposed to do in the meantime? They said, I don't know. So I went to talk to Henry Mon. And I, and I said, you know, I may not have a job for next week. He said, well, go talk to the department head. So I went and talked to him. And the guy said, you know, gosh, it's already April, you know? I'm not sure I have money. He says, I'll try to find you something. I said, fine. The next day, the department head came in to see me. And he said, you will never believe what happened. Your thesis advisor says he will retire early if I offer you an assistant professorship. So I'm offering you an assistant professor. And I said, no, thanks. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a professor. <laughs> but two years later, I decided, yeah, I wanted to be a professor and he offered me a job. Really, come on, 
That's the most amazing life, right? I tell you, I, I'm, I am really lucky to be here. And I almost didn't get into graduate school. So I was turned down by everybody. And it's like March now, I'm not in a graduate program. I had come back from Vietnam, right? If you, were, if you went to Vietnam, people considered you to be an idiot. They had no respect for Vietnam veterans back then. So one day, a person calls up the license bureau in Tucson. And they say, uh, here's the license plate of a person who's blocking my driveway. Can you give me the name and phone number uh, of that person so I can call them not to block my driveway? And the other person says, well, I can't give you that information. It's, it's confidential. I, I have no idea who you are. I, I don't know if you're trustworthy. And the person said, oh, says, I'm very trustworthy. My name is Dr. Jim Clay. I'm head of the math department. And the other person said, and why haven't you offered my son a teaching assistantship? The next week I had an offer. That's the only reason I got into graduate school. Really, it's been, I've had a charmed life. You might look at a research area and uh, make sure that there's a large enough community um, so that uh, there are other people around that you can interact with. Um, I think that um, much of the work that I did depended upon my own uh, ingenuity. And I didn't read enough papers to borrow ingenuity from other people. That's probably a mistake. There's just a, a huge amount of work that people are doing. And it's... It, it's great to join, uh, in, in, be part of a research group rather than uh, working alone. So I have lots of joint papers, but again, they were initiated by questions that, you know, I heard somebody mention or I came up with and I'd get somebody to, to join in and we would write a joint paper. Um, but again, I, I'm just a lucky person that I, I worked in this area and was able to contribute. Uh, I would recommend that mathematicians think about applying for internships with companies and, and government labs so that they can get a, a feeling for how mathematics is really being used uh, out in the workforce. I think that would make them better teachers of mathematics.